Rudy, talk to me about what came in this week. Rudy encloses my entire magic collection along with them. Great memories of good friends and fun times in the 90s. You wanted the story with my cards? So here we go. There was the time I lost half my collection at a tournament, which included a Lotus and three Moxes. Then there was the time my friend traded a land up to a Lotus over a six-month period. But I decided to tell the story that's most important. And that's how he met his friend Dave. Dave. Let me set the scene. Early 90s, Unlimited just came out. University student got introduced to Magic at a campus gaming group. They still have that? Are there college campus of gaming groups? A few months back, I heard about Magic from people who went to Gen Con and came back with some alpha beta cards. God, Gen Con's been around forever. Never thought that much about it until it got real popular in the gaming group and everyone started playing with it. I went to this event and got myself a starter deck. With that, some free cards were given to me by friends. Built your first deck. Now, remember, this is the first days of Magic. Everybody was new at it. There was just one set of cards and pretty much no one had a collection. No one even knows what, much about deck building. Channel Fireball didn't even exist yet. So my first deck was an ele elemental deck. Basically, I took all the big creatures I had and I uh, made a deck with it. If you go through the unlimited set, the big creatures aren't really rare. So they're mostly elementals. I remember this to this day. And uh, <laughs> I didn't even have an air elemental. Why? Because air elementals have fly. Flying creatures was the shiznit back then. And no one wanted to trade me their elemental. It was. It sounds crazy now at the very event that someone traded away a mox and a double land. Who loves that? Double land. Not dual lands. Double land for a singer vampire. Yes, a singer freaking vampire. But a 4-4 four, four flying creature that grows won you games back in the day. So here I am with my ghetto elemental deck. I love the ghetto. You're missing an H. Elemental deck with no flyers. The first came out full of geeks. When we played for Anti, you just flipped the first card up and you bet your card. A few games in the night, I met this guy named Dave. I knew Dave from the gaming club. And Magic way before he had a good deck. All right, guys. I don't want to tell you too much because there's a little bit left here. But it's just funny. Sarah, Because remember, Sarah Angel Flight gave permanent flying. I love it. I love it. I love it, folks. So, Magic's been an important part of my life. These cards carry a lot of memories. Hope you pass them on to new players who will enjoy them much. Well, I will sell the non reserveless cards. So, first we got this cool notebook, some old random cards over here. Ah, I love the old cards. The musty smell of mold and death. Something about it. It's always special. So, we've got some random cool little everything from Alpha Beta, Arabian, Antiquities, and um, some cards falling out of the notebooks. Unlimited cards, good old white border sinkholes, uh, antiquity cards, nothing really of value over here. Uh, revised fork, uh, the old doppelganger, everyone's fave, love the artwork. Little Tron land, black bordered original. Uh, beta, little unlimited, or beta, um, unlimited, uncommon air elemental, which is kind of ironic after the story. Uh, a few small things around here. We got a nice beta gloom, that's an uncommon. Some Legends, The Dark, Uncle Estevan, always a cold card, but not worth much money. The old uh, Might Stone, Meek Stones from, um, oh, wait a minute. Look what we got, folks. We got the very rare reserve list, Torox Gate. Yes, folks, the amazing enchant land with an entire novel written on the card from Fallen Empires. It is, it's the, I'm going to corner the market and move it from 10 cents to $3.10. All right, Abomination, got a little Cyclone from Arabian Nights, cool, a couple bucks. A uh, little unlimited card, little twiddled action there. Good old uh, Rudy shoes that he walks around uh, and apparently treats people poorly. Uh, we got invisibility from Alpha, pretty heavily played there, and uh, a few small things. Ah, sushi and the old uh, sushi man and the old uh, game of Tetris. Love it, love it. Very cool little cards there. Ah, uh, infamous Abulet. You know that's getting reprinted in Modern Horizons or some sort of set in the next twelve months. Uh, another Suchi over here, another Sushi Man. Uh, obviously, there are some color variants to that. Nothing wrong with that. That is very normal in that old card back in the day. Uh, a few small things. Got all these Gold Legends cards. Such a thing back in the day. Most of them don't have much value, but man, they were so cool. You guys have no idea Gold Legends cards back in the day. How important and how iconic they were. Nice little power artifact. That's pretty sweet. Uh, Rudy in a test tube in 300 years from now. Still talking about magic. Another uh, little Abulet. Pretty rough condition over there. Uh, the old Drill Sergeant. I always thought that was a cool little card. The artwork on that just, just makes it, man. I mean, look at this thing, everybody. Look at that artwork. Look at that artwork! Who drew that, Julie? Look at that! Flipping nuts, man. Bananas. Nebuchadnezzar. I wish it was black-bordered. And going into the clothes, got some nice upside-down falcon. What upside-down falcon means it's worth two times the uh, value of the regular falcon. 
Yeah, that's really about it on this one, folks. Um, oh, no, I'm kidding. So let's get to the high-end stuff that makes this video exciting. You guys ready? All right. So this is what made the video or got me excited to buy this gentleman's collections. First things first, we got the unlimited Mox Jet that has seen so much love. It is flipping out of control, but people still love them. That's not the sad part. Let's grab ourselves an off-camera stack of magic cards from uh, War of the Spark Commons. And yes, folks, you know what this means. You guys, for those of you who've been around, you know what I'm doing. Let's put the mocks in there. And then what do we see? We got ourselves an inked cards, folks. You can definitely see. Where's the worst? See if I can get on camera. We've got some definite, definite dirt. And we got some ink. You can't see it too well in the glare. Uh, I was trying to make it a little nicer on the camera. The lighting's not the best today. Sorry about that. Unfortunately, we do have some inking on the card. Um, let's see if I can get this to come through really nicely. You've got the corners. There you go. The whole bottom. The corners have been uh, touched up with the Mr. Sharpie. And you can see some little touch-up points along there. Do you guys see that? Where's Rudy's tool? Get Rudy's tool! So you can see specifically along the card. Looks like they just dabbed it with a Sharpie right there, right there, right there. You can see the dark black Sharpie lines across. Which sucks. Even in bad condition, that means you can pretty much never grade the card. Because then it'll just come back authentic, altered from all PSA, BGSC. Right there, all the ink dots. You can see where it's touched up. There's another touch up. Oh well, still a great card. Love to have it, but unfortunately that crushes the value. Then we do have my favorite card of this pretty much collection. We do have an Ancestral Recall Unlimited. Again, definitely not mint or gradable condition. But a very, very cool card. Absolutely gorgeous on the white border. No yellowing on that card. Very exciting. We have a very nice unlimited time walk. This one's a little rougher. This is a solid, very, very heavy played card. But again, it's legit, and this is a very nice one. Very, very cool card to have. Then, of course, what are Rudy's favorites? Good old Arabian Nights Guardian Beast. Very, and to this day, still very underappreciated card, in my opinion. For the longest time, this was like a $50 to $100 card. It's finally moved up to a couple hundred. Say the same price for like 10 years. The market was just not awake at that time. Very, very cool Guardian base. Very excited to have that. Angus McKenzie. Rudy loves the old Angus. Angus and good old Gwendolyn are my two favorite gold cards from Legends. Very, very cool card. Ring of Maroof. Um, not really too much to say about it. Just a kind of a unique, bizarre card from Arabian Nights and Reserve List. And, of course, one of Rudy's faves over the years. Good old Bizarre Baggy, you know. If there's any one card, I'm surprised I'm not on Wikipedia saying the story of Bizarre Baghdad. Uh, great card, very unique, very, very definitely, very, very heavy played and loved. A lot of wear, but it's still, still authentic, still very cool. Revised Jewels, you always got to be real careful about these. These are the most commonly counterfeited cards in the industry, everybody. So you always got to be real careful when looking into these. Obviously, all of these are authentic. Some are just incredibly worn. Some are a little nicer. Like these two, some are just devastated, some are just devastated. But we do have a nice little handful of revised duels, so uh, that's cool. And we got a nice uh, Wheel of Fortune that looks like it went through 14 washing machines and is so worn. That is just nasty condition, not a lot of value there. We got a Sorceress Queen, I always thought it was a cool card. Seeing Tree was really cool in my personal faves, I still think it's undervalued. And for the love of God, it's a tree with a mouth. Are you kidding me? I just want to shove my head in there and just let him sing. Too much. All right, sorry. Too much. Too much! Please don't talk about it on Reddit that I'm shoving heads in trees. I apologize in advance. Uh, the only bad part about this card, everybody, is uh, we do have an actual... Can you guys see that? The whole corner actually has a crease bend going across. Where's Rudy's tool? So, yeah, that kind of sucks. You can see the crease line right there. That's about it. Last couple cards uh, of no notable value. We've got a nice mana drain. Um, ever since they reprinted uh, Iconic Masters, and it's actually not reserve list. Mana Drain and Karaka still remain very, very cheap and undervalued, in my opinion. But who knows? I don't. It may not really change in price anytime soon. I just think it's kind of stuck there. Maze of Ith, again, same thing. Been reprinted. Eternal Masters. I still think the original for like ten, twenty, thirty dollar range, depending on condition, is stupid cheap. But what do I know? Last but not least, folks, we got the infamous Underworld Dreams, which for the longest time was not very expensive. I don't even... It's actually not reserveless. Go figure. So, uh, still cool to have the original. And that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed this little uh, pickup video. Giggity. Picking some stuff up and uh, definitely learning. As always, be very careful, everybody, when dealing with high-end cards and looking out for inking. And if you have very old cards and you want to be uh, discussed and people want to throw things at your face on the internet, Alpha Investments, LLC, at gmail.com.